All right, so welcome to a mentoring session here in Santa Clarita Toastmasters Club. Were you informed what the topic for today is going to be? Yes or no? Oh, by the way, everybody put your mics on. I like noisy sessions. Can you all put your microphone on, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So just a quick check. Do you all know what the topic today is going to be? Who knows? Yes. How, yes. How to be the life of the party. There you go. And if you're wondering why I'm delivering that talk, you, you heard that guy who just talked? How? That's his fault. He said he wants to know. <laughs> Simply because I'm an energizer bunny, I have no intent of being the life of the party. <laughs> somehow end up being an energizer bunny. So please feel free to ask questions. <laughs> that's what this whole session is going to be about. Are you fine with that? <laughs> yes, All, right. Sure. All right. Okay. So I wonder what it means to you to be the life of the party, but I'm going to tell you a deep, dark secret. I didn't, I didn't talk when I was in elementary. Can you believe that? I didn't talk when I was in elementary. I was thought to be shy. No, I was just quiet. I was not shy. Know the difference. There is a difference between being shy and being quiet. So I will explain to you why I was quiet. Well, it's a deep dark secret, but it's over now, okay? I had skin asthma. You know, I had lots of dots around here and I looked like a polka dot girl. And my very mean brother, who's still mean until now, used to get a pen and play, <laughs> connect the dots. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I was pathetically ugly. So there are many reasons why people don't want to talk. It's not that I didn't want to talk because I was afraid to talk. I didn't want people to look at me. So first things first, to be the life of the party, get over your hangups, rise above it, fix it if you can. And I'm going to share some tips with you. Will you be happy? Wait. Why does everyone look so unhappy? By the way, are you all on, are you all on gallery? Can everyone click on gallery so you can see the people beside you? Mm -hmm. Gallery is the upper right corner. Are we there? Are we there? Yes. We're there. Gallery? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Reggie, you're sinking into the islands. Reggie, can you put your head higher into the sky? I'm afraid you might drown. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, sometimes I, I'm so afraid that Reggie is going to drown. By the way, Robert, if I tease people, the more I love you, the more I tease you. So be careful, Robert. Make sure I don't fall in love with you. I'm gonna tease Got you. it. <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay. There. So first things first, do not ever have the intent to be the life of the party. Meaning... It's really not cute to have a calling card that says, Vivian Mangalinda, life of the party. Don't do that. <laughs> Let people call you that, but don't ever praise yourself that way. Ask me a question at this point in time. Any question, go. Why? Ask me why. How? Ask me a question about that. I'm gonna be giving pointers and my intent here is to get people to understand that to go to any party, whether you're alive, alive or dead, you have to learn candid conversations, not memorized conversations. Don now, has a question. Oh, Don, question. Yes. So Vivian, why not go in with a big street sign saying in neon saying, I am the life of the party? Why not? Because it's obnoxious. It's bad manners. Nobody's going to like you. <laughs> Valid answer, Don? And it might be hard to live up to. You never know. Yeah. Again, it depends on what their idea of life of the party is. 
So let me quickly show you what the ending will be. You end up being called the life of the party, but you never, 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 never self-proclaim that you are. Can we all agree on that? Is that a better idea? Yeah? All right. The first tip is, you're going to write this down, two words. See how? I'm not going to tell anyone three things here. <laughs> two you words. You will. I know you will. <laughs> two words. Be real. Write that down. Be real. Now, there are some foolish people I fail to understand. When I tell them, be real, what do they do? Go to Google, how to be real. <laughs> Arr, a bunch of losers. Arr. I just finished saying be real, and then you're Googling how to be real. Reggie, can you react to that? Your face is talking to me. What's <laughs> your face trying to tell me, Reggie? What? Be real, yeah. But how to be become real, you know? So that is what... Uh, because is, I don't want you know what, what? Is I don't want to show what is inside my heart so that uh, people like get misunderstood. Okay, that's a very very cute answer. I will try to quote you or what I thought I heard you say. I don't want people to know what's in my heart so they don't misunderstand. Did I say that right, Reggie? Yeah, yes. Okay. Well. I'm 71, and guess what I found out? Whether you tell them what's in your heart, you don't tell them what's in your heart, you're not even in the room and they never met you, yeah, they can misunderstand. So save yourself the exasperation. Have a nice conversation and enjoy yourself in the process. Just don't ever get obnoxious. You just have to remember, back in kindergarten, what is it? Good manners and right conduct. Can you write G M R C? Good manners and right conduct. If you're saying what, that's for kids. Remember the hand. Yes, you know that. <laughs> yes, I don't want that to happen to me. That's dangerous, right? The slap that was heard around the world. So, does that make sense? Can someone react to that? Where etiquette and basic manners. I'm not talking about <laughs> like that. Just simple good manners. Can you react? <laughs> Ashwini, I think you can put your microphone on mute for a while. <laughs> I had that the other day. I had a bunch of sneezes. Now, can you react to what I just said about manners and etiquette? Uh, I just looked up, you know, how to be real because you asked me to. And and it gives three things to be real, three steps. So I don't want to say any of those out loud. I just, All right. just want you to know there are three steps. There you go. And that is the first cute answer. I always call it cute to how to be real. You will never say, let me tell you three things. <laughs> And if you want to be correct about where to put your fingers, let me tell you three things. First of all, at the party, you're socializing. Do not act like a teacher in a classroom by telling people, wait, don't do that. You're socializing. Playing fields level, CEO, Work, introvert, extrovert, you're all at the same party. There's no rank and there should not be any, which I will remind any and all of you, if you want to be the life of the party, don't ever dream, don't even try to be the smartest person in the room. That is not the place to be a know-it-all because it makes everybody feel uncomfortable. It might make the smart person feel great, but he'll be blacklisted. That's how parties work. There are people who are blacklisted because they don't add value to the fun 
and the social engagement. Nadine, does that make sense what I just said? Or if not, why not? Put your mic on. Wow. If you're the smartest room in the, uh, the smartest person in a room, you could probably not want to talk during the party because because yeah. just one because nobody. First of all, nobody can understand you anyways because your music is so loud. <laughs> all right, and, and and who cares? There you go. You're again gonna write those precious two words that Dean and I used to laugh about. This who cares? That is what you want to remember. Every time you open your mouth, if you want to learn how to socialize, and it makes me laugh or cry at the same time when people say social media. Because when I'm with them, they're so anti social. I'm like, do these people speak English? Social media. And they've actually told me, but 80% of them, oh, I don't like talking. I'm like, why did you come to the party for the free food? Oh, Robert, can you please help me understand this? Social media guru goes to party, anti-social, and tells me to my face, in my face, I don't like to talk. What to say? What do you think, Robert? Um, maybe they're hiding behind social media, and in social media, they're comfortable enough to engage and type things and be a keyboard warrior maybe uh, but when presented of being in a room filled with people uh, they may be self-conscious and not know how to engage in conversation without being ridiculed there you go therefore it connects i'll be connecting people to what hal said a while ago where vivian said many people foolishly go to google and hal likes to be funny and he googles <laughs> and says do i famous number one on my hit list. Let me tell you three things, right? But you're so correct, Robert. People who do that are not real in person. And I have met a lot of them. I'm a columnist, I'm a writer. It takes, not one person is better or brighter than the other. We have multiple intelligences, which again, supports my statement. You are not the smartest person in the room if you think you are because someone can talk about Beethoven and Mozart and Bach and what if you don't know and this person is a guru globally in music so again like you said Robert they might be good at certain things on social media but they're afraid they're not this word they're not good enough face to face. Is that what it is, Robert? They're afraid. It connects also to what Reggie said. I believe there is some level of fear, yes. Okay. And my favorite line, if you can see this, it says show and tell. That's the title of my live, I repeat, live talk show since 2009. Contrary to belief, contrary to what Google says, contrary to what people made money selling books about, contrary to what teachers and professors say, Public speaking is not, I repeat, bold italics underline font 72 black, not, public speaking is not the number one fear in the world. Fear of being laughed at, fear of not being good enough, fear of being not too bright up here that fear gets in the way but remember no matter how bright no matter how beautiful no matter how strong you think you are there is always someone more bright more beautiful and more strong than you somewhere on this planet and that's why they keep breaking records about bigger better brighter so far so good or so far so bad. Any reaction to what I just said? Conversations, let's try to have a party here. Let's pretend this is a party, right? One, two, three, four, eight, ten. We're 10 people at the round table at a party. And this is how it is. This is what I do, where people have parties and they're, they're 
this is really what I do in life. I get invited to parties because people run out of things to say or sometimes cannot even start a conversation. And so the host is like, oh my gosh, I paid for expensive catering. It's so dull and boring. So I just go in and talk to people. So again, be real, don't be fake. And I've said this time and again, speak to express, never to impress. Notice certain lines go contrary to what you were taught in childhood. My child, you should always do your best, be the best, make sure you impress people. And here comes Miss V, don't impress people. Be real. Reggie, did it just contradict everything that you were taught, right? So don't let people see through you. But you see, Reggie, you've heard me talk about my many, many bloopers, right? It's okay. No matter how hard we try, we can't ever be perfect. Besides, who wants to have such a perfect person around at the party anyway? Because that's our topic today. Party. Ashwini, do you have any reaction so far, violent or otherwise? I, I think Jim I, uh, is, is perfect. I like yeah. Yeah. I mean, I should speak yet. I like your sentence. That, that's almost like a poem. Speak to express, not impress. That's great. I'll remember that. Thank you. One more. Thank you very much. They will always love you. And I will tell you a line that I learned. And that's how I ended up in broadcast, being a talk show host. Many people think a talk show host is the know-it-all, has to read all the news. I just mastered one thing. I'm like, really? Word number one, really? Word number two, wow. See, that's what it takes to be a talk show host. Number three is, tell me more. You have your talk show. Really? Wow. Tell me more. Notice how I was able to deliver three points, but I did not tell you. I'm going to tell you three points. I think you violated the rule. <laughs> that's just an opinion. It's all right. <laughs> yes. There you go. That's why I love how. <laughs> Share opinions. We have <laughs> candid conversations during parties. Remember, tonight is not about lecture. We're not in a classroom. This is conversational learning or learning conversations. The trick is, yes, you may. Perhaps sometimes you should deliver three points. Just don't tell them that you're going to tell them three points. Just deliver it. And somehow slide it in. Remember, Viv Vivian. Let me let me ask you something. So, how does your show go? What do you do on your show? Right on my show, I say, "Welcome to Show and Tell." My name is Miss B. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Learn to face communication skills and conversational fluency with Miss B. That's me. And tonight we have our guest. How? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. How do you like that? Looking and then, forward to it. Thank you very much. And then they tell me, what makes your show so different? I said, well, by the end of the show, they know it's true when I tell them, quote, be entertained as you get informed. I will repeat it again for the second time once more, this time with feeding over and over again. Be entertained as you get informed. How do you like that? You're having a good time as you're learning and you're learning as you're having a good time. I see a certain Dr. Lawana Parker. Can you give me a reaction in one sentence with less than 54 words? <laughs> you know I can't do that. <laughs> I love Lawana. She's my twin sister. <laughs> Go Lawana, try. 55, go, 55 words for you. Go, go, go. No. <laughs> that's one word. Okay, that's your answer. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you repeat your question of what you want me to do? <laughs> learning conversations and conversational learning, that's what I help people do. Actually, at the end of every party, people say, my gosh, we had so much fun and we learned a lot. <laughs> 
That's, I think that's how learning should be. Luana, go. Give me an answer. Well, one of the things that I like when it comes to you speaking is because you're always so fast on your feet. Me, I got to take a couple of seconds to think about how I'm going to respond to something that someone says. And usually I don't get the good answer until it's too late. All right. See, don't worry. As I said, there's multiple intelligences and there are different kinds of people. The difference is, Lawano might say that, but I'll tell you, when she does compose her statement, it's so precise. And that's why Lawana's a writer. Again, there are different kinds of people. There are writers, there are speakers, there are singers, there are dancers. There are some who say it, what? With flowers. And there are some people who will cook for you. That's Jim Gurney, but that's another speech for another day. People have different talents and show their skills, Robert, we express in many ways. Robert, how do you say I love you to somebody? In what manner? Do you say it? Do you dance? Do you sing? Do you cook? What do you do? Uh, it depends who I'm saying it to. Okay. Uh, so sometimes it's just said in passing, like when my son, for example, is getting dropped off at school in the morning, I always finish off, have a great day. I love you, son. But right. there's no eye contact. It's just it's a repetitive thing. There's meaning behind it, uh, but it's a lot different than, for instance, uh, giving my wife flowers and looking her in the eye and telling her I love you. So it nice. really depends on the situation. Nice. That's very cute. I, I had a spinster aunt who lived with us, and she would always, when she's delighted with something we did or good grades, she would cook particularly the favorite dish of the one who got high grades. So it takes all kinds. And so, Reggie, that's the answer. You don't have to be perfect because, Reggie, there are many people. Oh, my God, Reggie, you're sinking into the islands again. Fix yourself before you drown. <laughs> Fix your laptop. Okay. See, there's no such thing as a perfect answer. Because once you're a global speaker, which is what I do, I give talks in 12 countries in four languages, there is no way that I will ever have the perfect answer. Remember, these are all strangers. Uh, my superpowers, if I could call it that, is the ability to talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime about anything. And people say, wow, you're really so smart. You can talk about anything. I'm like, no. So, so what do you talk about? I just tell them, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you help me understand? This is so true. And people find it so charming and endearing. How? How do you feel? I mean, if someone says, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you help me understand? Can you de-jargonize it or say it in plain language because it sounds interesting? How would you react? Depends on what, what we're talking about and what the situation is. If I'm in a class and I'm teaching a class, then it's, then it's about going into the structure of what's happening. First, finding out what they're confused about going into the structure, giving them an example, helping them move through it. If I'm at a party and somebody says that, I might just give them another drink and say, you know, have a drink of this, you'll be fine. There you, you go. Know? There. See, now you're getting ways to answer. Reggie, did you just learn some tips, right? You don't have to have the perfect answer. Sometimes I just tell people, I will be a little bit brighter if I eat. Can I talk to you after dinner? I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to be any smarter, but I think I will be. Get back to me. By then, they'll not come back. They'll find someone else to talk to. And thank goodness. All right. Are we fine so far? I have some questions here that people, who has questions? Because if you don't, I will share with you. No questions for now? Okay. You're going to write this down. When you talk to people, you you want this is party. Tonight is about how to be the life of the party. So you want to motivate, put people in a good mood. So to be the life of the party, three words. Huh? Yeah. Heard that hala? Three words, not three things. Okay. Motivate, don't dominate. Motivate, don't dominate. Because sometimes I just say, oh, so what do you think? The person starts. In 1984, 
I set up my business. I was fresh out of at that point in time, I regret even acknowledging the existence of this animal beside me. Don't dominate the conversation with your biography. What was the question? This is a party. This is not the time to promote yourself. That's called a website, not a party. Okay. Party is for people to have interaction, hopefully build relationships, or just plain and simple. Come on, make friends. What's the point of being rich? Famous. But nobody loves you. At the end of the day, that's going to be a very sad person dying on the deathbed and saying, I wish I were more famous, more wealthy, and more bright. Eh, not really. Let me ask you, what is it that you would like to learn about so you can have more fun at the party? Not necessarily be the life of the party. Some people don't have fun at parties. Or can someone tell me, this is several questions so you can choose, what is it about parties that you don't like? Go. May, any? I have a question for you. Let's go Let's yes. go to him first and then, then we'll go to me. Asini. Yes. My wow. problem is, my interests are very serious. I'm interested in serious topics. War, peace, government policy, poverty, human rights. I am somehow weak in light conversation. I can't talk about day-to-day -day things, the things that make people cheerful. My conversation tends to be like argumentation or discussion or asking questions, analyzing things, which strains people's minds. And this sort of conversation is not suited for parties where people get together to relax, enjoy themselves, and have a good time. That's All right. my problem. In other words, um, it doesn't sound party-ish. I will ask a question, but you do not have to answer. Okay, you don't have to answer, but if you do, I'll say thank you. If you don't, I'll still say thank you. Do you remember the feeling, the emotion, or the mood when you first thought or believed that you fell in love ever? Yes. Good. Give me one sentence that you told the person when you were with the person having a conversation. With that person? Sorry? With the person who I fell in love. Yes, that's correct. But, well, I don't recall much of a conversation because uh, in India, we don't have much interaction. With okay. People with the there you go. But you do know between the two of you, there was. Did you ever plan to marry with yes. your children? Yes, uh, I okay. play with the children very frequently. I have a granddaughter, I play with her. There you go. That's all it is. Children, adults, parties, a playground. So thank you for sharing that side of you. And I tell people, no matter how serious the topics are that you talk about in life, I had to learn because I grew up on multiple scholarships and I thought and I believe that being an A student was the be all and end all to go to heaven, only to find out that I wasn't lovable being that way. And I found out that I'm real and people know this. I talk about my bloopers. It made me more human and more lovable, but that's me. It doesn't have to be for you. I'm just sharing tonight. Yes, who had a question here a while ago? I saw someone's hand go up. Uh, yes, Reggie. So, in two words, how do you answer the life of the party? In two words. Oh, like here, when the room is quiet and no one's talking. Two words, start talking. <laughs> Another two words, establish rapport. Another two words, get connected. There are so many two words. Does it work so far, Reggie? The life of the party means get connected, get going on with the people, 
the life of the party means just think if we have this room and there's no one having a conversation. Remember, huh? A speech is one person delivery. You do know that when there's a speech, half the people in the auditorium, because I give talks in auditoriums over 2,000 people, right? They could be sleeping, texting, I don't know, holding hands, falling in love. I don't know. That's how speeches work. One way. Talking with each other, that's two ways. The dean says, don't overthink. Yes, there you go. Wonderful. Right. See, um, my two words, Reggie, I'll tell you. It's the title of my column. I write for a newspaper and my absolute revenge on society. My absolute revenge on social media is love because the title of my column is Candid Conversations. You see my name, Vivian Mangalindan? Go to Google, type Vivian Mangalindan, Candid Conversations. All my columns are going to be there. And it's everything we're talking about here. Because I just want to tell you, since 1999, not to put a damper on this topic, is I've been helping people and with cancer care from geriatric, oldies, cancer, all the way to pediatric cancer, children with cancer. Guess what I found out? I talked to people who are sick, old, and dying. What is it you wish you could have done, not necessarily better, maybe differently? And then they just said, I wish I was more connected, more connected. And that's what I used to be a life of the party. Life, adding life. You see, when you're rich, bright, famous, powerful, it is lonely at the top. You know that. Yes, Nadine. Now, I have a question. Yes. When I go to parties, I usually notice three different types of people. <laughs> I notice the one. <laughs> I notice the one that are like out and pride and loud and they go in the center and they want to be the center of attention and they are like usually dressed all crazy and have either if it's women like crazy makeup then I have the people that are like sensational they're like taking the pictures they're like sharing it on Instagram they're just like watching the other crazy people doing their thing and then there's a third person that was usually me that was back in the corner just being like yeah waiting for something to happen for someone to be talked to now, how do you combine all these people and what do you think should, how to make like the little person the life of the party, but also the big person that is not really real, that is putting a show on in order to attract the other people? You know, how do you bring it all together? Acknowledge the people. Four words, it's not about you. Remember, you don't have a calling card that says they deem life of the party. It's not about you. A deep dark secret is the life of the party is the one who serves for the joy of everyone and does it with absolute grace, smoothly, because people don't know that this person is going to be the life of the party. But it's just a person who goes around. I'll tell you what I do. If someone's taking pictures, I tell them, I hope I'm included, but I'm going to ask you a special favor. And they say, what is it? I'll include you. No, 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 that's not what I'm asking for. And then I tell them with a serious face, I have the perfect shape. I'm perfectly round. Please don't take any pictures below my waistline, okay? And don't take it side view because it's perfect, perfectly round. So can you help me with that? And they have a good laugh. Humility and making fun of yourself goes a long way, Nadine. You can try if I were in your shoes. Remember I said earlier, I didn't talk from first grade to sixth grade. You're gonna tell them, I have so many things on my mind. I don't know where to start. Let me compose my thoughts. Get back to me later. That's a quick way to get rid of them. Ah, so you'll be on. <laughs> Is that fine if you're happy being by yourself? Or let me ask you, are you happy being by yourself? 
or would you want to learn how to be with them? Those are two different things and both are all right. Personally, I hate parties. <laughs> Jim is like, <laughs> okay, oh, let's sorry. finish the deal. So which one are you? <laughs> either way is fine. Which choose one? You wanna be because a lot of people um like being by themselves, they just like observing. And then yeah, tomorrow, it depends. Okay. I used to go, I used to go to parties alone all the time, and I would love to just get into conversations and talking in with other people, but then they have uh, parties that were so theme and like specific groups that I didn't feel like I fit in so I would observe but I feel like in those parties I was really uncomfortable because <laughs> I felt like I was just on the outside all right my gift to you is all the time I go to parties and this word sounds bad unescorted I go alone I travel alone I eat alone I go to the movies alone why because I'm such a public figure, it's tiring. I want to have alone time. So just change your mindset. Don't think that you're less than them. Find my column, Google it, Vivian Mangalindan, stop comparing. It came out last Friday. Stop comparing. The moment you stop comparing, you will have more fun. This is me. Or sometimes I tell people, this is my mood. Just two days ago, I was, yeah, two days ago at a Toastmasters meeting, and they always expect me to be super lively. And for that day, because people were rehearsing their speeches for the contest, I decided to be quiet. And so when they asked for guest remarks at the end, I finally gave my guest remarks. And the president said, oh, you know, we were worried about you. This is the first time you ever said anything throughout the whole meeting, are you okay? So it's really funny, right? So it's already expected. So Nadine, the moment you establish, here you go, establish your brand where you guarantee them that you are worth being invited to a party and you say, I'm really having a grand time, but wow, just watching all these people, Nadine, try this. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to say it. Get back to me in a while. They'll say, okay, great. Of course, they'll forget. Does that work, Nadine? Mm -hmm. Okay, give it a try. Let me know. Yes, Jim. I know, Mr. Jim. Yes, Mr. Jim. You hate parties, and so therefore, why did you go to the party? If you hate parties, you have an option to not go. I I enjoy going to parties, but I hate parties because inevitably, every time I go, I wear clothes that make my boobies itch. I got a scratch. <laughs> okay, my answer to that is I am allergic to some foods. Bring good old reliable calamine lotion. It's worked for years, right? Uh, don't make the mistake of what I did. I took my meds, allergy pills, two hours before the session, and I was like, <laughs> they could see me on Zoom. Wow, it's really embarrassing. So don't take meds, okay? Don't take allergy pills. Bring your calamine lotion. It works. Give it a try, Jim. Or find out yeah, particularly I, what material you're allergic to and find some I'm, other. I'm, I'm not allergic to anything. It's just that the shirt and the boobs, they kind of like rubbed together. <laughs> Any it makes it itchy. <laughs> It makes okay. it itchy. <laughs> they they start they start sticking out. <laughs> People at the audience they're gonna see the, the, the booby sticking out. Okay, there you go. Maybe don't going, wear lat latex uh, you know, maybe, just different. I, I was going to recommend to Jim to wear something women wear, but don't go down that road. But seriously speaking, one is even if you're not allergic, there are some fibers that make us itchy. And another trick that works is wear tighter shirts. No kidding, because they won't rub. There you go. Yes. Questions from those who haven't asked questions. May, I haven't heard from you. Do you care to ask? If you don't, it's okay. My question is, I don't have problems starting to talk to people, but then it's, I get, like one answer back. So I have to keep on 
coming up with questions if I wanted to hang around this person. It just okay. gets boring if I'm the only person asking questions and I'm just getting right. one answer, you know, one word answer. All right. When I give talks to teachers or I give talks in schools, I tell people there are no incompetent students. The teacher just has, has to learn how to rephrase questions. If you want to learn, these are basic questions I knew when I was a kid, and I'm sure you did too, just a refresher. Can you all put your hand up, please? Everybody, one hand up. Go, everybody. Other, other hand. And count your fingers. Who? Come on, go who? Put one hand, put who? What? Who? Why? Who? When? I, where? where? How? Oh. I answered to you, May. Who, what, why, when, where, how? Start your questions with that. Never ask a question that's answerable by yes or no. Like, are you enjoying the party? Yeah. How'd you find the food? Okay. <laughs> All right. You can say, which of the dishes did you particularly like? What about the party do you feel makes it different from the other parties? Reframe. Does that make sense? You have the question. To get interesting answers, May, it is our homework to generate interesting questions. Make sense? Make an effort. Who, what, why, when, where, how? What about the party makes it different? Who is your favorite person in the room? What do you think Robert's thinking? Why did I come here? Why would Ashvini wanna come back or not? See, it goes on and on and on. How do you think Don's gonna use any of this in his next cruise? Because he just came from a cruise. Where in the book is Lawana going to feature this? Because I know she will. She likes to write. There you go. There you go. There you go. Who, what, why, when, where, how? Why do you think Jim talked about his itchy, you know what? <laughs> 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 so who, what, why, when, where, how? Any other questions here? Before you do that, I have to tell you to be the life of the party or to go to any party. This is so basic because many people forget. Truly, huh? When you have a party, and I'm talking about sit down. The dean, you're talking about wild parties. And by the way, I'm going to tell you, how do I talk to people who are dressed up, you know, like um, something else? I look at them and say, can I learn how to do that? And they love telling. They, they will talk, oh, and I just do this. Again, really? Wow. Tell me more. Make sense? You don't have to know anything. We were taught that to be somebody, you had to know everything. Well, I'm 71. Show and tell. All I do is get people to show and tell. I found out that human beings at the party or otherwise, whether they admit it or not, their favorite topic is themselves. And I know, Reggie, although you say you don't like being asked, I know that when someone becomes your friend, you want to share a part of your life. You do. You, that's why you have a best friend in school. You have a best friend somehow in the neighborhood. And for life, you're lucky you do marry your best friend. Is there logic in that at all, Reggie? That's logic, yes. Okay, there you go. So now, Reggie, there you go. You don't have to worry about having the perfect answer because when you have 2,000 people in a room, you're going to go crazy having one perfect answer. And I was going to wrap this up by telling people when you go to a party, because some people forget, very basic, do take a shower. <laughs> and it's so important, mouthwash. No, people forget the basics when you're, <laughs> and I say, hi, my name's Vivian. And the person goes, hi, oh, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so really, when you go to a party, oh, if you don't have time to brush your teeth or you don't want to brush your teeth, I'm just mouthwash, okay? Because it's about conversations. It might sound funny, but you do realize, yeah, it is basic. And I know you've had 
some horrid experiences with that. So, do you have any questions before I wrap it up and uh, give people time to react? Yes, Ashwini. One more question. As I mentioned, I'm from Delhi in India. I like attending the session. And as I have requested in the chat also, I would like to attend more sessions. I mentioned that I've never traveled abroad. I have had a keen desire to meet foreigners. I've met a number of foreigners in Delhi. So I think this club would be a good platform for me to interact with foreigners. I would be happy to be allowed to attend meetings. I can pay the fees or whatever you like. And I would be happy to attend uh, similar sessions and parties. Thank you. And now? The famous number three, I'm going to tell you three words. See how I got it in. I love you, Ashwini. <laughs> Let's give Ashwini a big round of applause. And because my English is funny, here's how this be the life of the party gives you a big round of applause. Who walk there? Round of applause. And if there's many people, <laughs> there. Okay. I don't have to be bright at 71. If I give you some enjoyment, good. But to be the life of the party, there's only one rule. You have fun. And when you have fun, they mirror it back to you, with you, and with everyone else. If you have violent reactions, please let me know. If you don't, well, thank you very much for sharing your time and a part of your life with me today. And Ashwini, huh? I told you I love you. And please tell your wife to understand. It's only Toastmasters. It's only one hour. <laughs> thank great. you very much. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vivian. Back thank to you, Vivian. Vivian. And thank, thank you, you, Hal, for raising Thanks, your Vivian. Thank you. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Don't go there.